Hey everyone, Benzie Johnson Jr. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to an ongoing series called Explain for Non-Americans, where I explain American quirks, mostly intelligent, to everyone else. So, call signs. For folks in countries where they're not really used, they can be a confusing piece of some nation's broadcasting puzzles. But basically, they're unique identifiers for specific individual radio and TV stations. Even if those stations are affiliates of a larger television network, or if they promote themselves using a more memorable but less unique brand name, such as the common network and channel number combo on American TV stations, you'll still be able to differentiate one station from another by its call sign. Only a few countries openly use call signs, the US, Canada, Mexico, Mexico, and to a lesser extent Australia and some parts of Asia. For big countries like the first few I mentioned, call signs make a lot of sense, given that there can be loads of television stations crisscrossing the country, each covering different areas. I'll cover the US first, given it's the focus of this whole series. Here in the States, broadcast TV and radio stations are officially identified by their call letters. Stations additionally have to mention their call letters on air at the top of every hour or as close to the top of the hour as programming allows. Keeping in line with the practice started with radio in 1912, stations located in the East have call signs beginning with a W and stations in the West have call signs starting with K. Following the W or K is three letters chosen by the station owners. For example, WXYZ, which is an actual station in Detroit. The divide between W stations and K stations was originally set at the border between Texas and New Mexico, then hang north to the easternmost borders of Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. In 1923, the wire line was moved to the Mississippi River in order to better balance the population split between the two as much of the country lives in the east. Affected stations started before the change could keep their original call signs. Call signs were also originally three letters in 1921 and 1922, but starting in the spring of 1922, the norm became four-letter calls given that the number of stations that would launch in the following years would outnumber the possible three-letter call sign combinations. Three-letter calls were still issued for a small number of initial stations until 1930. The three-letter call signs still in use on TV include WBZ, Boston, Massachusetts, WWJ, Detroit, Michigan, and KGW, Portland, Oregon. There are exceptions to the WK call sign divide, mostly within the 11 and a half states moved into K territory in 1923, though there are also examples that go the other way, like KDKA in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, licensed in 1920 from a set of K calls previously used on ships, and KJWP, which moved across the country in 2013 from Wyoming to Delaware. The station changed its call sign to WDPN back in September. How a station emphasizes or de-emphasizes its call sign in its branding is up to them. Some stations, like KTLA in Los Angeles or WPIX in New York, display their call signs prominently. Other stations, however, don't care much for their call letters and are fine using a more generic on-air identity. Some stations' call signs are even a little clever, such as spelling out words or names, like WACO in Waco, Texas, or mentioning the station's channel numbers, such as WTWO in Terre Haute, Indiana, or WIVB in Buffalo, New York. IV being four in Roman numerals. Up north in Canada, stations use prefixes CF, CH, CI, CJ, and CK, followed by two letters. The CBC, Canada's public broadcaster, uses the CB prefix, followed by one, two, or even three letters, though the three letter allocations are for French language Radio Canada stations, the extra letter in those cases being F. Given there's no legal requirement to mention call signs in Canada, they usually aren't mentioned on air. When networks even have to go through the trouble of regionally separating themselves on air, they do so with a network and local location, style of brand name. For example, Global Toronto. The only stations which do identify by their call letters are independent stations or the few network affiliates that still exist, most notably independent station CHCH. Toronto station CITY is a unique example of both these conventions, as it was first an independent station before expanding into a national network in the 2000s as City TV. Australia is a third country where call signs sorta of matter, with the format being somewhat different. Two letters of the licensee's choice, followed by a suffix, usually the first letter in the name of the state of license except C for Canberra and the Australian Federal Territory, and D for the Northern Territory. Public broadcaster the ABC uses four-letter call signs for its regional stations outside of the major metros, the first letters being AB, like all its stations, the third the local identifier, and then the suffix. Though like Canada, there's no reason to mention them, so most channels are branded in the same network-location combination if the location has to even be mentioned at all. Mexican TV call signs are XH, followed by two to four letters. Japan uses JO, followed by two letters. Philippine call signs are DW, DX, DY, or DZ followed by two letters, South Korea, HL, then two letters. And beyond that, they're not really a thing, with everyone else just using normal, common channel brands because that's all they need to differentiate themselves. Hope that explained call signs for you. If you like this kind of content, then hit subscribe so you don't miss any more of this or any of my future videos. And I'll see you next time. You used to call me by my call sign. Do, do, do.